as an organization, we have been trying to think about innovations. That was the very good reason why we started this center. It is a center for sustainable agriculture development. Our emphasis has been on sustainable organic agriculture, which puts emphasis on the use of locally available resources and specifically natural resources. When I was in the US, I realized that they are very mindful about organic agriculture. They are involved in making soil. They are involved in multiplication of worms, what I can call now vermiculture, and its products. So I came back with that challenge with, with my colleagues. I explained to them how we can try to see or what we can do in order to improve our soils, in order to help our farmers access inputs that can help them promote organic agriculture. Vermiculture basically involves the use of specific earthworm species to turn organic wastes into a natural fertilizer. Uh, this is our vermiculture unit. You can call it the house of worms. Like here, we use the red worm, the Essenia fetida for reasons that it has high reproductive rates, uh, it has high appetite. You see for it, it eats almost everything that is organic or anything that was once life. I mean anything that can decompose. And secondly, it works well in shallow settings. Like, and it is uh, well adapted here in the African settings. The temperatures, the humidity, so it suits well into the settings of our environment. The best importance of vermiculture is we get the organic manure. This is a soil amendment that we apply in our gardens for reasons that it has high nitrogen, high phosphorus, and the potassium. You'll find that this organic fertilizer has nitrogen five times than ordinary soil. It has the phosphorus seven times than ordinary soil, and then potassium 11 times than ordinary soil. Everything we need in artificial fertilizer, the NPK and what, is actually uh, composed into the earthworm refuse, what the earthworms manufacture. So that's why I picked interest as a person, but as, as, as a group leader, you know. So uh, we took it on, and you know, me, I, I, I'm, I have a science background, so I want to experiment many things. So on starting it, I wanted to experiment it on, on in my compound, first of all, before, b before I really stamp that uh, this thing really works. If you apply it in your garden, it comes with other uses. It will help you buffer the pH of the soil. Secondly, it will improve the structure of the soil. It doesn't easily disappear as it is artificial manufactured manure. Before the project was put into existence, this land was bare. In fact, it was being eroded by the wind, and in fact, the conditions were not conducive for the learning environment. But after the introduction of this, better practices were exposed to both the teachers, the parents, plus the pupils. A 
vermiculture involves an organic management system. With that, you plan how much organic waste do you have, how much resources do you have, how much time and the machinery, the human resource. So you need to have a system. And with that, it will answer some of the questions, whether you're going to do it on small scale, like here, and you're going to do it in boxes, plastic containers, or whether you're going to use the windrow approach, like if you're doing extensive agriculture and you're having large amounts of land, then you are going to apply the windrow, where you just get organic waste, dump them, put earthworms, and have huge tons of the organic manure. You'll want to have a container where you're going to put the earthworms. You'll need the bedding for the earthworms. Then you'll need the food for the earthworms. And then lastly, a cover. So basically those are the four components of a vermiculture unit. We use various containers, like the wooden box. We have uh, plastic containers like used up benzene. We also have this other plastic container. Those are all containers that you can use when you are rearing worms. When you get the container, you put a bedding. Uh, why am I using paper? Such and because this bedding helps you to regulate the amount of water and secondly it helps in temperature regulation. After that you put the organic material that could be your second layer. Let it be tomatoes that have been left at home. Let it be the portion you failed to finish from your plate. Then finally, you get the worms. Then you sprinkle water on the organic material, depending on the original moisture content of the organic matter. But shouldn't exceed the 40 to 70 percent. After the, the water, now you cover your unit so that you reduce the loss of moisture through evaporation. And secondly, you also do away with pests like birds that come and eat from your unit. And secondly, you want to, to keep light away from the earthworms because they, they are so sensitive to light. Like for this small setting, you have to raise it off the ground because you don't want pests like safari ants eating the earthworms. So you, you put it on raised surface. After setting up your unit, you have to come and keep checking whether the moisture content is fine, whether the feed is still there for the worms, because when you're feeding the worms, you need to do it in layers. You have to put la feed in layers. You put the first layer when they, they eat it, then you put a second one, until when your unit is filled up. Uh, secondly, you, you want to see if the manure is, is done, because it needs three months for the organic manure to be completely turned into an organic manure. So you need to, keep, to come and keep checking whether the moisture content is fine, whether the worms are living, whether there is any pest that he has intruded into your setup. You get a surface and you pour, you pick from your unit and pour it on a surface in a pyramid 
way. Why do we use this? Because earthworms are so sensitive to light. So what you do, you, you, you pick the whole substance and heap it in a pyramid form. So what happens, the earthworms will keep running down. And for you, what you'll do, you'll keep removing the organic material as the worms move down. So you keep separating, you keep repeating the process until when you only get worms at the bottom. This is finally the manure, which is a mixture of worms, eggs, and uh, microbes. And the organic manure, organic matter at all stages of decomposition. If somebody wants to go and start up this vermicomposting process, we sell to them and teach them how to do it. So this is what they take. For the organic fertilizer, we have both the solid, which is the vermicompost, and then the liquid, which is the vermity. And with this setup, with the box inclined at an angle, uh, you can be able to collect the liquid manure, which is the, the vermity, the, the urine and the little water we put here. It drips off and we collect it off. Basically it is tea for the worms, but it is also rich in nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. This is the solid manure, after which we dry and then pack the solid in this 10 kilogram bag. This one is vermicompost. We sell this 10 kilogram vermicompost bag at 20,000. So this one is now ready for garden use, let it be, you have a vegetable garden, you can use, if you have your maize, you have your cassava, you have your coffee, this is what you use. For the liquid, you use foliar application, you, you wet the leaves, and for the compost, if it is in the nursery beds, you can use broadcasting method. Or if it is in the main garden, you can use placement method, where you use a handful per each hole of a plant. Let it be maize or bean or cassava, you use a handful. One of the things I'm experimenting the vermicompost on is uh, I have two banana plants, this one and another one is behind me, where I want to really see the, 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 the performance versus other kinds of manure. Uh, so this one, strictly, I apply as, as, uh, uh, the, the vermicompost. When I started the vermicompost, it was there. I saw, I monitored the banana that was on and, uh, and uh, now I switched to the vermi compost, both of them the liquid and, uh, and, and, and the solid. Um, where I planted this thing is, uh, is the soil is, is, is acidic, uh, arid or what. Uh, it's maram and what, so it's really bad. So I'm seeing the results already, um, depending on what it is giving me. It really works. First of all, the, 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 the compost we get out of it. Uh, the, the urine we trap, very, very uh, di diverse in, in, in uh, plant nutrients. Junior Yawai is here. It's uh, one of the experimental plants, uh, um, putting the vermi uh, compost on. Um, I, I did it uh, intentionally, put it in this sack to see whether really, if I, if I 
use the ordinary soil, this ordinary busiro soil, and uh, use the vermicompost on it, I can really get out something that is, is reasonable, such so that I can expand it and do it, fill the compound with, uh, with this. But uh, trust me, I'm getting the results right. Vermiculture requires low skills and low resources. As you can see, you can use containers that are locally available, meaning that the, this innovation, which is basically managing soil fertility, can be done by anyone. And in terms of income generating, you can sell the vermicompost, you can sell the vermity. Still, we see a lot of women can get involved in this because it does not really require a lot of labor, even the resources are low. We are trying that each member in the, in the home has that box that has earthworms. One, me basically, the, the manure, the compost we get out of it, eh? uh, and then the liquid manure manufacturing. And then third, uh, like I, I, I told you earlier, I'm planning on uh, rolling out on fish farming. So I'm starting with the catfish very soon. So those earthworms, part of those earthworms, will be fed to my uh, 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 catfish. And, and then the fourth one is uh, its business. Uh, recently I sold a few kilos of earthworm, so it is business. We have been challenged by the organization about the availability of input for organic agriculture. In as much as we have a lot of inputs for the conventional agriculture market, very little is said or is available for the, to support the farmers who are involved in organic agriculture. It's one of the organic uh, fertilizer manufacturing uh, ventures we must all embrace and, 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 and go into. So we are urging people to use this vermiculture other than the artificial manure. Vermiculture is a very important tool when it comes to waste management because you are reducing the amount that would otherwise be landfilled into the environment.